Well, you've heard of leprosy and tuberculosis, but what about their distant relative, Baruli ulcer? The mysterious flesh-eating superbug is rapidly spreading in Australia and anyone can catch it. The problem is doctors have no idea how to control it. Lurking in a swamp surrounding a housing estate is an ancient bug doing damage. This is by far and away the worst outbreak we've ever seen in Australia. It's rapidly increasing, it's uh, becoming more severe. This illness can claim limbs and destroy lives. I might lose my leg. Intense. There are days that you sort of thought, dear God, just give me a pill and put me to sleep. Uh, it was really traumatic. But the most terrifying part is the mystery that shrouds it. The transmission of the disease is one of the great unknowns. It's really almost unique. It's not quite like any other disease I know about. Experts don't know how to stop it spreading. Where it's headed next is anyone's guess. It certainly is an epidemic. This is 12-year-old Jet learning to walk again after spending three months in hospital battling a powerful strain of flesh-eating bacteria called the Beruli ulcer. It stopped me from running around and doing what I usually do in normal life. A terrifying ordeal that Queensland mum Anna Lee says could have ended in disaster. Pretty terrified, to be honest. Um, I remember the moment that the doctor came out of um, surgery. He said, I think that you need to go to Brisbane and there's a real chance that if we don't get find out what this is, that he will lose his leg. Um, and that was, I remember those words, and uh, it was really terrifying. My daughters and my son were told that uh, there was a possibility I wouldn't survive. Neil Hewitt was once an Olympic rower, but after 14 operations, he'll never have full movement of his arm again. Doctors believe this retiree contracted the Baruli ulcer while gardening in his backyard. He now lives with excruciating pain, so bad that at one point he asked his surgeon to do the unthinkable. He said, look, I've, I'm over this. The pain's quite intense still. Uh, the disease has killed. Uh, I, th I just think, take my arm off now because I ain't my over it. It's a problem that's increasing quite alarmingly, really. Dr Daniel O'Brien is fighting an epidemic. He has 100 patients currently suffering from the grotesque ulcer, which has been around for decades, but never like this. It seems to be getting more severe in a high proportion of cases, so um, what that means is in some people they're getting much more aggressive and damaging infections. Experts are largely in the dark. They know the disease often occurs close to bodies of water. What they don't know is exactly how it's transmitted. There are a number of theories. One is that possums are carriers and their droppings end up in a swamp or ocean. That bacteria is picked up by a mosquito or sandfly, which bites you. It may be that mosquitoes are biting possums and are biting people. It might be that the, the possum faeces in the environment then contaminates it and people are getting it um, into their skin through cuts or scratches. The outbreak in Victoria has the Department of Health and Human Services very concerned. Acting Chief Health Officer Dr Brett Sutton. If we understand how it's transmitted better, we think we can protect people better. We certainly think that um, you know if it's a mosquito-borne disease, then we can really hit mosquitoes hard. That's part of the research program. They don't believe it can go from human to human, but around 5% of patients will have another family member struck down. Nobody would want this disease. Mum Bianca Ludewick and her little girl Isla have gone through this ordeal together. She was so little, the antibiotics that you have to take to deal with that um, bacteria is really, really strong. You don't want your daughter to be, you know, having those going through her liver and things like that, it's not nice. The first big outbreak of this bacteria was several years ago in Victoria's Far East. They called it the Bansdale ulcer. It's also found in North Queensland as the Daintree ulcer. For the last two decades, Baruli has been found in Victoria's Ballerine Peninsula.
A few years ago, the Ulsa travelled across the bay to the Mornington Peninsula. This is the red zone. Doctors have seen cases where people have visited here for as little as half an hour and become infected. We've got kids and I just thought how horrible it would be for one of the kids to get it. Melissa and David live in Rye, one of the biggest hotspots in the bay. This dad works as a tradie. Not being able to lean on his elbow for eight months has been a nightmare. It's a long time to have a hole in your arm. Rates in Victoria's ground zero have climbed to a scale never seen before. In 2000, there were two cases of Baruli. In 2017, there were 277. And experts predict 400 new cases this year. The question is, where will it hit next? Well, if we see a, an expansion of, of the area where it's uh, causing disease, obviously we're concerned that there'll be a bigger you know, metropolitan population exposed. It's completely possible, I think, that it could move up further into Melbourne, that it could move into Geelong, it could move down the coast uh, of coastal Victoria, uh, and it could even move into state because the fact of the matter is it is moving around. Sarah Marie was living in Melbourne's inner suburb of Carrum Downs when she got it. She's had a skin graft but has been left with this awful reminder. There was times where I was really sad and upset about the whole situation. I think it's really scary that we don't know enough about it yet and it needs to be so much more research. Catching the disease quickly is key. The ulcer, which is related to tuberculosis and leprosy, incubates under the skin for anywhere between three weeks to almost a year before surfacing. It often starts as a nodule or, or like a bite um, and becomes a bigger lump, red and swollen and then it can form this really deep ulcer. Infectious diseases professor Paul Johnson says it can be detected using a simple swab test. We have evidence from case control studies that people who cover themselves when they go outside protect themselves from biting insects, clean and cover cuts and abrasions that they sustain while working outside or gardening. That seems to reduce the risk. I think we still have to keep the disease in perspective that the absolute risk to somebody is still low. As for 80-year-old Neil, he's battered but not broken and adamant you'll never get him out of the garden. You don't know what's next. You hope nothing. You would. The government has committed more than $2 million for research into the Baruli ulcer epidemic in Victoria.